So when I put this video together, I saw it was going to end up being pretty long, but I didn't feel like there was anything I could cut or speed up more without losing part of the point, which was walking you through the full process of an eye-opening modification. I feel like I rarely see these sorts of mods done, so for some people this might be your first time seeing it happen, and I didn't want to cut much. I'll be working on my sleeping Feeble 65 Ein faceplate. The process starts using a pencil to sketch a shape for the eyes. I decided to use the existing eye line as the bottom edge, and just open upward. I try to get the eyes roughly the same shape, then use the sewing gauge to check measurements and be sure they're as close to the same size as I can get them. This is a pretty simple, straightforward process. In case you're wondering, this is a regular mechanical pencil with normal graphite, so it can easily be washed off if I make a mistake. Once I have a general shape I like, I begin with a hand drill and create a starting hole for the eye modification. This isn't necessary really, but I find having a starting point hollowed out makes it easier to be sure the drill bit goes exactly where I want once I start using power tools. When I have a good hollow for starting, then it's time to break out the Dremel and just drill straight through. I'll add a few more holes with my battery powered Dremel on low speed, but now that I have a pilot hole, I can angle the bits toward it so that if anything slips or skips out, it'll slide toward that hole and into it instead of sliding down toward the bottom edge of the eye and damaging things that I want to leave intact. The angle of the drill is quite subtle, but on the second eye you can actually see how it skipped forward when I started to drill and it caught in that pilot hole, which prevented damage. At this point, the main goal is opening up a space big enough for a razor blade. It almost fits, but not quite, so I'll open a little more before I get to the carving part. Carving with a knife is, in my opinion, easier than doing everything with a drill. As long as the blade is nice and sharp, it cuts through the resin pretty easily and helps me whittle out the shape of a new eye opening without a lot of effort. I'm frequently asked what tools I use for modifications and I try to list them all in the videos. But for ease of reference, I've actually made a public post on Patreon where you can see a full list of my tools with links to the actual products on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the video description. I think I've just about gotten everything on there, but if there are other supplies you're curious about that are not on the list, leave a question here or there and I'll make sure I add it. I also use the drill to clean out anything that gets stuck in the eye openings as I'm carving, because it gets hard to see what I'm doing when there are all these little curls of resin stuck in the gaps.
So next up I get out some of my carving burrs and switch the collets on my drill. I use an incredibly tiny round burr to carve out the corners of the eye, which forms indentations for tear ducts. A lot of shaping and carving happens with the knife, and honestly, that's not that interesting to talk about, so instead I'll tell you a little about the character this doll is going to be. Or as much as I can since I've been sick for a while now and I'm not sure how long my voice will hold out before I get croaky. So this is Katinia, or Kit for short, and she's Feral's best friend at the temple. They're both mages in training and have the same inclination toward healing. Kit is a yellow rank mageling, which puts her one level behind Feral, but she's admirably strong considering she's also half human. I'll be modifying her to have slightly pointed ears, but I'll be doing that another time and might not record it since I've covered making elf ears before. Unless people want to see it, then I might film a watch me work video about it. I can already feel myself getting hoarse, so I think I'm gonna slow down on the talking and just stick to the important parts. Eventually, I've gone about as far as I can with the front of the faceplate and need to hollow out the back before I can move forward because the resin is so thick. I use a larger circular burr and start rounding out a shape on the back side of the faceplate where the drill holes have come through. At this point, dental tools and files are useful for cleaning out hanging pieces of resin, which once again get in the way. About halfway through this process, I decided to focus more on one eye at a time. Once I started hollowing out the back of her faceplate for eye wells, I realized I didn't really know how wide they needed to be. So I used a super tiny drill bit to drill in at the corners of the eyes. That way, that gives me markers I can aim to encompass, since the eye wells on the back need to be larger than the eye opening on the front. Then it becomes a slow back and forth sort of process, pushing in with the larger burr on the back and the smaller one on the front. It's unfortunately kind of hard to show the work inside the faceplate because it's a really small space, but I move the burr in a steady circular motion working my way out from that initial carving point. You can see that this is a hugely messy thing, and if I had sense, I would have done it in my sanding box, but honestly, I forgot I made it because I put it in the front room where I had more sunlight to work on Rune's parts. 
So there's that. After a while, I got nervous about how deep I was going with the burr bit, but this faceplate was so thick. I kept being fearful that I'd break through the front of her face, and then I'd have to do restorative work with epoxy clay, but I never even came close. It's kind of funny. The corners of the eyes are the biggest challenge, and I use a really narrow pointy file to shape those. I also use a curved file to help smooth and shape the upper and lower eyelids. I have to stop many times to clean my workspace because there was just so much dust everywhere. Having a cloth underneath my workspace catches a lot of it, but it gets hard to see after a while. Once the eye wells are really deep, I use a more egg-shaped burr to help smooth out the sides of the eye wells. I test a couple different eyes. Funnily enough, I can't find any in the one size I intended to use. So I check a size up and a size down to kind of guesstimate how big the eye well needs to be. The hardest part is grinding out enough resin that the eye sits very flush to the new eye opening. On a lot of dolls, the eye resin is really only a millimeter or so thick on the bottom.
eventually I get there with one eye, so I hollow out the other the exact same way. Since that's the same procedure, I'll skip forward to when both eyes are about the same and I feel they're a bit too sleepy looking for a character like Kit. So I get my pencil again and arch them a little higher to make her look a bit perkier. I like this shape with the upper half of the eye being larger because it makes her look happy and Kit is a really positive and cheerful person. Once everything looks nice, I can refine with files and sanding twigs, which are useful for getting into really narrow places like this. One eye is a shade smaller than the other, so I rely on my files to help even them out more. I check measurements, make refinements as necessary, but she's really close to done now. The very last step is using fine grit sandpaper to make sure everything is smooth. I mostly worry about the sharp edges of the new eye openings, the tear ducts, and while I give the inside of the eye wells a few swipes just to make sure they're not too uneven, I don't mind leaving them a little textured because it helps the eye putty stick. And that's it. She's pretty much done now. She's not perfectly symmetrical, but she never was because most sculptures have small imperfections. She's ready for her elf ears though, and then I can finally work on getting this girl together. That's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.